Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Retrolectors. What do you get when you have a Dreamcast, four controllers, and five games? A hell of a party. Here are five fun Dreamcast games that you could play in a party or by yourself. Choo Choo Rocket. Developed by Sonic Team, released November 11th, 1999, and sold 56,000 units. Choo Choo Rocket's premise is easy enough to explain. You control Choo Choo's or mice that must make their escape to the Choo Choo Rocket. That's where the simplicity ends. You see, you're not the only alien animal on the playing field. You are instead chased by, you guessed it, a Kapu Kapu. Okay, fine, a cat. You must place arrows on the field and guide your Choo Choo's to the rocket ship to safely escape and win the round. Being one of the first Dreamcast games to be online, it's no wonder why this game still is held in high regard and still being able to play on various Dreamcast servers. House of the Dead 2. Developer Sega AM1 released September 9th, 1999 and sold 339,000 units. As the Dreamcast launch lineup looked stacked from the get-go, only one required you to purchase an accessory to take realism to the next level. Bring in House of the Dead 2. With hordes of zombies, bats, leeches, and countless undead, teaming up with someone side by side never felt so good. Using your newly commissioned and trusty light gun, you and your partner can play through one of four game modes. Arcade, which is a successful port of the Smash Arcade hit. Original mode, where you can use in-game acquired items to progress through the story. Training and boss mode, which is pretty self-explanatory. When playing through this, you can have branching story arcs and different playthroughs every time you play. You save a human or you save a bystander and you could progress in a different way if you're fast enough. The next Tetris Online, developed by Blue Planet Software, released December 20th, 2000, and sold 28,000 units. A spin on the original Tetris designed by Alexei Pejitnov, the next Tetris introduced the ability of online head-to-head -head play and online leaderboards. In the next Tetris, you have two game modes, Tetris Classic, which is a single player only mode, and the next Tetris, which features online, single player, two player, and marathon and practice. Fun fact, the online capabilities were removed in the PAL region, and I don't know why. I've looked this up and I can't really piece out as to why this was taken out. Maybe it wasn't ready, or at that point during launch, they figured that it was really buggy and they decided to really remove it from the game entirely. But the fact that it was removed from PAL regions doesn't make it any less playable online in North America. Tennis 2K2, developed by Hitmaker, released October 24th, 2001, and sold 68,000 units. The follow-up to the super successful virtual tennis, Tennis 2K2 features 16 real-world players from Serena and Venus Williams to Patrick Rafter and Carlos Moya. Gameplay is simple enough. It's tennis. There are three game modes. Tournament, where you must win five matches to face the game's boss, the king or queen, depending on who, which player you choose. Exhibition, which is exactly what it sounds like, with customizable options. And World Tour. While playing through this, I remember playing World Tour on the original Virtual Tennis, and I loved that game mode, especially the mini games, playing that over and over again and just trying to get a high score and trying to better your tennis player. And this is no different than that. The World Tour mode features a lot of mini games and tournaments, which is a great amount of fun. But the single player mini games was where I had most amount of fun and customizing your tennis player with various rackets and clothing, which was really, really cool to do as well. Also in World Tour mode, there's also a yearly calendarized season mode where it takes you through a calendar of game modes or gameplay elements that simulate certain aspects of the game. This allows that as well, where you could go into tournaments day by day or calendar month by calendar month, and which was a great addition because it adds more depth to the game. Worms Armageddon, developed by Team 17, released November 30th, 1999, and sold 68,000 units. The Worms franchise is a turn-based tactical shooter that requires players to use terrain, weapons, and overall strategy to defeat AI in a single player or versus an online multiplayer. You control eight worms on a battlefield that range from beachfronts to even Mars. You, the player, move your worm along the terrain to gain better vantage point to drop bombs, shotgun shells, and airstrikes, and even cartoonish weapons like the skunk. Worms Armor Again features nearly unlimited customization. You can set up any match with any weapon you see fit. So there you have it, five great multiplayer games that you could play at any party or gathering. Having these games makes it worth the price of owning a Sega Dreamcast. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys played any of these games, put them down in the comments down below. Thanks, guys.